Welcome back to Second in Command of Veep Rewatch, a questionably accurate podcast from the Veeps of Veep, the Outsider's Insider. My name is Tim Simons. I play Jonah Ryan. Matt Walsh uh, said he was going to be able to zoom in today, but is not here. Uh, so that's very nice of him. Uh, but taking his place, the voice you heard a moment ago, it's Callie Hershey. Yes. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, Callie, real. Wait, yeah. Well, before w- before we go in yeah. to how we met, where you started on the show, how long you were with us, and all that, um, uh, what were we talking about right before this? We were talking about the transitional. Oh yes. Yeah. You know that season meme? four to five. You know yeah. that meme where it's like a tiny domino that ends up knocking over a giant domino. Yes. I feel like in that meme, uh, those guys convincing John McCain. Uh, to to bring on Sarah Palin as the VP uh, as the VP uh, on the ticket, yeah, is the little domino that then knocks over the the, the January sixth like insurrection. It's yeah, you knock this one over, and then all of a sudden, some guy's smearing shit on the walls yes. in Congress on January sixth. Yes. Um. So, Callie, with that incredibly just smooth transition, yeah, so smooth, so smooth. <laughs> Uh, so we met during the pilot. You were with us from the pilot all the way into season five. And yes. when we first met you, what was your job title on the show? I was just assistant to Armando Iannucci. You were Arm- Armando Iannucci's assistant. Yeah. You were in, from what I recall. Yeah. You were in that production office. Yeah. In like the second floor of the Hilton in Baltimore. Yes. Where the good coffee was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, do, what was your, um, Walsh isn't here. Yeah. What was your, I'm, I'm going to surprise you with this. Okay. What, what were your first impressions of Walsh and I? Oh, okay. Well, all right. First impressions. Well, Matt, of course, I knew him, you know, okay. been a fan of his work, mm-hmm. was excited to meet him. But also, yeah, I was very surprised, not just Matt, but everyone was just so nice. And I know people have been coming on here and saying it, but it was like, that's how it was. Like everyone, you know what I like to believe actually is like, we all had ties to Chicago, really. That, yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's just like those Midwestern values coming out, you know? So I immediately like felt that from Matt, for sure. And you, what I remember, like... To me, you were like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> you know, like you knew too, like you were like, no, like I could I could like talk to her and like get some information, but also like, you know, we're we're within the same age range. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you knew you found a friend in me, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I was just like I loved it because you were just like, I've never I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. How is this possible? Like and I was like, no, I feel the same way. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I work behind the scenes, right? Like, yeah. I was very much the same way. A kid in a candy store of just like, Julia, Tony, Matt, all these, Anna, all these great people. I actually had worked with Reed um, before. I had picked him up from the airport um, in Chicago on my boys. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because so, cause you came I was a PA, out of yeah. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. And you studied at Columbia College, yes, right? Okay. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I had already I had already met Reed. I don't think that he actually remembered, but I had to pick up him and the entire cast of my boys one day. Did so he ever ask you for a burrito? He did not ask me for a burrito. No. But I will say, I do remember him always coming into the production office and stealing waters. And that was, like, definitely a joke. But with the support staff of like, well, here comes Reed. Coming to, <laughs> coming to stock up. <laughs> Wait, on my boys or on? On on the V pilot. On V pilot. Yeah, so yeah. here's the thing. Reed is the one who taught me to do that. Yeah. There are times where like I will drive by two or three convenience stores to go to a production office just because it feels better to get free snacks and free coffee. Yeah. And at some point on that thing, I was so nervous about overstepping my bounds. Yeah. Uh that even though it was Reed who was finally like, wait, you've been waking up and like it's cold out. You've been like putting on clothes and going out, like walking like seven blocks to a Starbucks. Like the production office is right there. Just go get coffee there. Yeah. And by the end of that time, he had taught me. I was in there early to get the coffee out of the production office. Yes. This is the shit that people are turning into. 
<laughs> the turning exactly. it for. This yeah. is it. I yeah. ag- I agree 100% about the Midwest Chicago value yeah. that sort of permeated the show. And I know that, um, and I think that you might say that the, that there was a, a sort of strange Venn diagram overlap with that attitude and with like the sort of London yes. English attitude. I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected that, but those two things went very well together. Very well. But like everybody, I mean, I know Kevin and Gary didn't come around until, uh, didn't come around until season two. Uh, but they are both people that are steeped in a Chicago world. And yeah. it's, um, so you started out. Yeah, yeah. As our arms assistant. Arms assistant, yeah. But at the time, you know, it was the pilot, so he was the director, showrunner, writer, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so inevitably, I was involved with the writers, and that also meant I did script coordinating, even though that wasn't my title, but I was the but one handling doing... the revisions and popping things in and getting the pages out, and did you that know was me. That... So you became our point of... Co- it's, imp- it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's awesome to have you here because you became, or at least you, you, we've talked a lot about this, about like our own level of, our, our lack of confidence or our level of comfort yeah. uh, with the rehearsal process and being like, is this okay? Like, we don't yes. know if we're... Doing... You became a pretty quick point of contact to be yes. like... Hey, what's going on? Like, yes. what are we shooting? Is this working? You just be like, yeah, guys, it's working. They're all happy. Yes. Yeah. I was. I, I definitely felt sometimes a little bit like the therapist to you yeah. all, like, <laughs> yes. in the way of like, because I could see the stress, or you guys would just be talking, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, is it working? And and then you, yeah, somebody I think would, you know, very subtly say like, yeah, what what are they saying? What oh, you know? God. What are the conversations? What are you hearing? Sort of thing. But I was happy to give it because I get it. Comedy's hard. You yeah. Know, just in the way of like, especially when there's so many of you who are so talented and so funny, you're like, yeah, am I good enough? Am I good enough to be here? But yeah, killing it. You guys killed it. I also like found um, some emails like with you improving. Like, I, like I'm telling you, like, I know you and I bonded really quick because yeah. I found like an email when you guys first started this of me being like, Pretty sure something you said in the table read made it into the script, and you were like, "What?" <laughs> but like, you know, yeah, I was happy to be that person. And I think that we were. I mean, like looking back, obviously, I, I think when uh, this applies, uh, I'm going to be putting this on on Matt because it applies more to him. My lack of experience we've talked about before, yeah. but like we were all doing it. Like the even the more experienced people we're doing it too. And I think we were like trying not to be thirsty or not trying to admit to ourselves that we didn't have that confidence, but it was like, you just kind we would always just be like, all right, no, like we would try to be all casual. You yeah. Know? Yeah. What are, what are you hearing? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yes. like, it's, it's like the least subtle thing. We're basically just like begging for someone to tell us that we're pretty and we did a good job. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. We just needed a pat on the head from yeah. dad. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so you were the go-between. Yes. <laughs> you were such a cast therapist for so <laughs> long. But you were also a cast therapist. Uh, so there was the therapy part of it. And then there was like the personal assistant to all of the cast thing. What we're learning right now is that you were given a bunch of jobs that were not in your job title. Correct. And you would should have never done that. Probably not. You got paid way too little. Correct. It's correct. <laughs> Yeah. So, but you would also tell people like Callie, like, like, what are we shooting yeah. tomorrow? Yes. And you would always be like, don't quote me. Yeah. But this is what it's looking like. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I was totally involved in the scheduling and also, you know, as the show grew with availability of guest ac- actors and cast, like, yeah. it was always uh, a puzzle to figure out on top of what scenes are actually ready to shoot. <laughs> uh, could we shoot this tomorrow? No, we cannot shoot we that can tomorrow. We can absolutely not uh, shoot that tomorrow. What can we shoot instead? Yeah, so I was very involved with Dale and Stephanie on the script side because I was the closest person knowing like, oh no, they're working on that. Like we cannot shoot that scene. Right. You know, things like that. This is going to be a question that goes to my lack of knowledge about that process or that workflow 
and now that you you so you now work on succession yes but would that point would the, is that person uh, the is the script coordinator the point of contact for that question or was it just this is the only person that we think we're going to know like it, it, that we think's going to know yeah i think that armando definitely gave me a lot of responsibility yeah out the gate mm -hmm. and i was you know 24 years old on the pilot young hungry wanted a successful career in Hollywood. And I was always told, just say you'll do anything. Yeah. Say you'll do it. Do it all, even yeah. if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, here we go. I had never script coordinated before the V pilot. I was going to ask, did you even know how to use Final Draft? Um, Self-taught. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> sure did. Can you do this? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So fake it till you make it, baby. You know? That's... That's enough. That's fantastic. So uh, you started out arms assistant, very quickly become a cast therapist, a cast <laughs> personal assistant, the script coordinator. Yeah. And then at what point did you, be, so, because ultimately you became an associate producer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Arm and I just, we, we really did. We had a really great relationship from the jump. I mean, even when I interviewed with him, it was a five minute interview. So I had no idea that I was actually going to get the job. But in the five minute interview, I was finishing his sentences. <laughs> like he would say something and then I would like finish it. He'd be like, um, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, great. So I had no idea though, because it was such a short interview. I was like, I don't know, I can't tell. But then I got the job. And so we had a really great relationship the whole time. And at the end of every season, we would check in. So at the end of season one, he was like, what do you think about next season? And I was like, I'd love to not do the scripts and to do everything else. Yeah. Because like I could, it's just with the scripts, it's its own dedicated job, especially on our show yeah. where new pages are coming in every five minutes, even if we have a full draft of a script, it doesn't really matter because <laughs> we had to continually rewrite, rewrite until it was perfect, right? So um, he, he agreed with that. So that's what happened season two. We got a new writer's assistant script coordinator, which was actually Sean. My, oh, yes. If we, can, if we want to go there. <laughs> we can absolutely go there because the other person that's in, uh, well, before, I'll finish off the associate yeah, yeah. producer thing before we go there, yeah. is that what ended up happening is that you became an associate producer. And when that happened, we would go around each other, the, yes. the, we would go around the table oh at Table God. Reads and everybody would introduce themselves and say their job title for all the new people. And then I can't remember which table, it would have been season two, episode one or season three, season episode three. Yeah. Season three, episode one. Callie Hershway had been, <laughs> hi, I'm Callie Hershway, I'm Armando's assistant. Yes. And then season, we didn't know it was coming. She was like, hi, I'm Callie Hershway, associate producer. And yeah. everybody stood up and gave you a standing, standing ovation. ovation. Oh my God, I have goosebumps <laughs> right now. Because honestly, like, I was like, I cannot believe that they are giving me a standing ovation. And it was, I mean, like, it really was a heartfelt, like, absolutely, you deserve a promotion. You do so much good work for us. So that really was a heartfelt moment. But again, like our cast always does, yes. it then became a running bit. And so now whenever, it, for then three more years, yeah. You, yeah. whenever you <laughs> introduced yourself as an associate producer, I got we stood up and go. go. Every time. I will never get that again in my life. So I savored I savored that. I mean, yeah. yeah. There were like a lot of things that were never that were never gonna get in our lives. <laughs> yeah, that's I, true. Well, speaking of things yeah. before we talk about Sean Love, yeah, yeah. who was also in the production office. Yes. Um uh I wanna say about things that'll you know, you're never gonna feel this good again. We were <laughs> an honorary mention for the Webby Awards. Second in command, is that true, Arvin? Can you are so we were an honorary mention for film and television podcasts in uh but you can't vote for us. They just wanted to give you a nod. They just wanted to give us a nod. Yeah. They wanted to give us a nod. And here's the thing. That's so that's so nice of them to want to give us a nod, but it kind of feels worse than just not mentioning us at all. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much uh, for, to the to the Webbies uh, for 
for giving us a, a for giving us a nod. And as I say this, I, it sounds like I'm being just a real old jerk about it. And that's not what I want. I don't want to be a jerk. Yeah. But it kind of feels like it kind of feels like being the fastest slow kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't that so fitting for It yeah. kind of is. Yeah. But you know, at some point you just want to grow up and be a, and be a fast kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're totally right. Like I don't need another I guess what I'm saying is I don't need like another moment in my life in which my uh, my status is is clarified. Yeah. Because that's happened a bunch of times. Yeah. That, I don't know if I've told this story on the uh, on the podcast before, but I went to a wedding one time, and I, it was like my manager at the time. His name is Ben. It was his wedding. I was talking to a friend of his, and his friend he was he thought I looked like somebody else. And stop me if I've told this before. But he thought I looked like somebody else, and he was like, "Whoa, is that?" whoever it was he was like and he put his hand up like this and he was like oh man and if you're not watching the pod my hand is kind of high up and he was like uh and he was like wow ben's working with some pretty good some pretty big clients and then i realized it was you and he then put his <laughs> hand lower so he like actually physically showed me my level of importance in his mind in that moment. So I guess what I'm saying is we have to savor the moments where things go well. You have to. Because most of the time you're just, especially in Hollywood, yeah. you are going to be told your status over and over and over again. Yeah. And you have to have, you have to have some pretty good armor for that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, you can't vote for us in the Webby Awards, but the Webbies would like you to know that we exist. Yeah. That's very nice of them. So nice. Sean Love was also yes. just a young up-and-comer. Young up-and-comer, yeah. In the Eager, production office. Passionate. Well, office PA. He was just an office PA. That's the runner, right. yeah. And he eventually became... The writer's assistant script coordinator. That's right. And he was... Um, he is also now... My husband. Your husband. My husband. And yeah. the father of how many children? Two children. Two children. Yes. So there are two full ass human beings yeah. in this world that exist. Because of Veep. Because of Veep. And because Reed came down and was stealing water and was like, oh, you guys seem like you're talking a lot. And then just like walks out and you're <laughs> like, oh, it wasn't supposed to say that. And now, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a real forward question. Yeah. When did you guys get together? During um, the pilot? During the pilot. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys moved fast. Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did. But it was, you know, not serious. It was just like, we're cool. Does Sean listen to the podcast? <laughs> does he know this? <laughs> he does listen, yes. Okay. And yes, he does know this. He does Because know. I went back to LA and he went back to New York when oh, the pilot right. ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't, I mean, we knew we were going to get picked up, but we didn't officially yeah, yeah, know, yeah. right? So um, you couldn't really pick up this relationship exactly. until the show was picked up. Didn't really know. But we actually did um, Eastbound and Down season two. No, season three. We did season Eastbound and Down season three before Veep season one. And we both worked on that oh, show together. Nice. Okay. So that's really when we officially oh, got, got together. That's when you picked up the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we just like never lost touch from the pilot, but then we started working together again. And then it was like eastbound and down straight to Veep. So. Are you comfortable with this line of questioning? Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Because well, ultimately you did have two children. Yeah. Okay. Well, also fun fact that I didn't know until you guys started this podcast, but day one of filming the pilot is our daughter's birthday. Our first daughter's oh, birthday. Oh, really? So like seven years later is when she was born. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That is wild. Just like of all the days of the year. Of all the days. And I, I really, it really does sort of like shock and alarm me that there are two people that exist only because we decided to do this dumb thing. Yeah. It's like so great. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. You should tell them that at the every night. Um <laughs> So you become an associate producer. You then ultimately help us through the transition. Yeah. So yeah. So season three, after season two, we sat down again. Arm was like, let's take season three to do mm -hmm. what you want to do. He always knew I wanted to produce and I wanted to write. So season three is when I got my associate producer credit. Mm -hmm. Season four, I wrote Punch Ups, was, you know, legit. 
you were punch do- up writer. Yes, yes, yes. On season four, all ten episodes, um, as well as Sean was too, um, and another the other assistant in London, Peter Fellows. He was also yeah. Um, so yeah, the three of us got punch up season four because Arm is very good about what do you want to do. Let's make it happen. Yeah, and supportive in that way, you know. The and I do think that this was something that existed both with Arm and with Dave about and just that was sort of baked into the show's DNA. And I don't think all of them are like this. I don't think all shows are like this. But that a good idea can come from it anywhere. Yeah. We were talking in the last episode or one of the previous ones about how um, about how Amelia was promoted because yeah. she was like working the front desk. She was like an office assistant. Yes. And then ultimately got to be a staff writer because she, she was writing funny jokes. She was writing funny jokes. Yeah. And so like I do love that that Arm does seem to be somebody who uh, nur- both nurtures people yes. in what they want to do yes, um, and is a trustworthy boss. Like that wasn't just his relationship with the people that directed episodes to give them yeah. freedom to do it. It was kind of everybody. It was us as actors. It was people coming in who were like, I'm your assistant, but I also want to be a writer and a producer. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. And then season five, yeah, we moved the show to L.A., Mm -hmm. and Sean and I both came out to help with the transition from Armando to Dave. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you were sort of cast therapist during all that. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, because we were all, it was brand new territory. Brand new territory. But on the same show, so it was like, wait, we're, we're the old guard. Yeah. There was a, I remember thinking this will probably be something that we talk a lot about in the transition episodes when we finally get there. Being yeah. That, like, it was very weird to go into season five with an entire language that we had developed, like a shorthand yeah. with writers and directors and everybody. You just walk up and you could, like, do a little thing and they'd be like, I know exactly what you're saying. We got it. Like, or yeah. we flagged it, whatever it is. To have that, all of a sudden, you had to create a brand new shorthand. Yeah. You didn't have any of the shortcuts to the the end result that you had built up over four years, which was crazy. We are obviously talking yeah. about season four, episode two, East Wing, written by Kevin Cecil, Roger Drew, and Andy Riley, directed by Stephanie Lang. Yeah. I believe this might have been Stephanie's first episode. I think she... Directed? I think this is the first episode of ours that she directed. Is she? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't... Uh, Oh, well, I was like, I thought maybe she got it season three, but maybe you're right. Maybe it was season four. I think it was, se- I think it was season four. And Sheen is pretty much now just, uh, I, she was a longtime producer for a lot of different HBO shows and yeah. a lot of different uh, shows in general, um, but then made a transition. And I think she is now just, uh, and she is now just directing. So she was a producer on all those. Okay, um, so she was doing second unit directing before. Oh, she would so have been that's probably unit. where yeah. I'm yeah. probably the full episode directing was yes. this one. Okay. Um directed by Stephanie Lang, who was our producer from the beginning. Uh filmed in September of twenty fourteen and aired on April nineteenth of twenty fifteen. Uh so this um oh, I gotta go I'm gonna go to my notes. Uh it starts out um, we're in season four. She's president, still running for president. Uh, at the same time, the opening credits have changed. The music has changed. Yeah. The story being told in the headlines is now like, you know, the eight month president question yes. mark. Um, Mike has dyed his mustache. Oh my gosh. Uh, and we learn that, <laughs> we learn that from, uh, from, uh, Teddy and Doyle. Yeah. Who is serving. I actually forget how Doyle became vice president. Is that just an ascension thing? Do you remember? She, I think she Does picked she him. Does she pick him? She picked him. Yeah, there was a whole. Is there a whole, there's a whole bit on that. Isn't there's it? a whole bit This on is it. why it's hard to do these things out of order. Yeah, because, totally. Because I didn't rewatch the, se- like the season three. I didn't watch episode one. I just watched episode two a couple times to prep for this. Right, yeah. Wait, you have a joke that made it into this episode, right? Yeah, my my. But, s- wh- where which which scene is it in? It's at the end. It is, so okay. we can save it. Oh yeah, we'll save it. Yeah, I want I want to make sure we don't miss it. Okay. <laughs> uh, because I again, the industry is going to let you know what your status is all the time. Yeah. You cannot, and I definitely took time. Like there was like the first bit that 
I, like a scene I wasn't in. I made a big deal out of it on this show to be like the little grapes, the fruit or whatever during the uh, the abortion episode. Yeah. That was like a bit that I threw in and made it in. Very proud of that. Yes. Take take a little victory lap when you get there. Absolutely. Take your, kind of like getting an honorary mention, mention. from the Webbies. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to. When you hit those high watermarks, you yeah. got to celebrate them. Absolutely. <laughs> so Mike has dyed his mustache. Uh, I, I, there's a, there's a line here that I really like, uh, where somebody says he looks like Yosemite Sam, but without the credibility, uh, which is just a great, uh, which is just a great line. Yes. Um, there is Zach Orth. Yeah. Is then, who is the current director of communications. Yeah. Cause Mike is the press secretary. Correct. Yeah. Do you know Zach Orth's history? Um, I obviously know what Hot American Summer. I knew him from. That's right. Yeah. From there, so I was a fan. I actually, um, I was in audition rooms a lot of times. Oh, really? Yeah, I would go with Armando. You know, like his whole thing was just like, "You don't leave my side," and okay. I was like, "Yeah, I won't." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got to go to things like that with Arm and Julia in the casting audition. So I actually remember him auditioning and us being like. All right, we like that. We like the cut of his jib, you know. What can you tell me when, like, if it's positive, name names, but if yeah, it's yeah. negative, don't. But uh, can you think of was there something about that you saw work, or like something that like if you saw an actor do it, you'd be like, oh, Arm's gonna like that. Did you get start to get to know what he preferred or see what worked for him? For sure. What were some? Or are there stories that you can remember from? Oh. From casting? Yeah, from casting, yeah. especially when it comes to like, you know, whatever, not not just us. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, or like the big parts, like even like yeah. people coming in. Sarah Sutherland, I was in the room when she auditioned. Really? Yeah. And it's very vivid for me because she knocked it out of the park, you really? know? She came in and she wasn't like any of the other talent we had seen that day. And Arm gave a note, you know, he was like, all right, could you just try this and that? I don't remember his note, of course, but... um. She immediately adjusted. Yeah. Beautifully. Like, pitch perfect, spot on. And then we did improv with her. And just her being um, a vice president's college student, like, her riffing was very funny. But also, like, she embodied Catherine. She yeah. really just did. And... Like, that day, it was, like, probably, like, I remember driving in L.A. with Arm, and I was, like, Sarah Sutherland, you know? And he was, like, yeah, I think, you know, of course, I got to talk to Julia, but, like, yeah, she was great. She awesome. was really great. So, she's somebody I remember. I remember Jesse Ennis coming mm -hmm. in. I uh, Yeah, Jesse Ennis shows up in this episode, and, God, she is fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. remember her auditioning. Um, she had worn, like, a perfect D.C. staffer outfit. Yeah. Like, from the top to the skirt to, like, the flat shoes. Like, she looked like she came out of D.C. Um, and she, again, just very funny. Yeah. How often would Arm, because he's got that sort of impish quality, how often, and I'll also, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question there. Okay. How often he would, would he just outright fuck with people that were in the audition room? And, like, I'm going to throw stuff at him without them knowing. And also, how often would he fuck with us? <laughs> That's the second part of the question. Um, auditions, he definitely, like, because you can tell when somebody's more comfortable or, like, obviously, if you know their, the, sh the things they've done, you know if they'd be more well open to, like, improving or taking a loose take or whatever. So he definitely would maximize those opportunities, I think. Mm -hmm. And then with you guys, yeah, again, I think we maximize those <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> um, I think Walsh brought it up on here, but... You know, on the pilot, we did have this whole B script, which was just like a secret script that I had that had just alts for everyone. And he was like, you know, pretend like this doesn't exist, even to me. And I was like, right, okay, no problem. And some mornings he would be like, hey, you know those little few lines? Like, you can send, you can send those now to the actor. Like, so I was doing that on the pilot, just like giving them lines to try um 
And then certainly as we went on throughout the season, sometimes, because we always had, you know, you guys had your sides, mm-hmm. but we had our own sides, which had all of the alt jokes in it. Yeah. So we didn't have to like come up with it on the day. Of course, there were still things that came up that you had to adjust to, but at least we had like a good little guideline to go off of. And on those, sometimes we would have like even a secret one and he would be like, just tell the actor, don't yeah. tell anyone else that they're going to say that because he loved that. He loved that element so, of surprise with your genuine reactions. Yeah. And it, were, it was so fun. I mean, he, I mean he, he talked about it when he came on uh, the podcast about liking that. And uh, just, I mean, so it makes sense that he then also would bring that, even though he wasn't surprised by the thing that I'm sure he then just liked other people being surprised and then seeing how they responded to it. And I know that like sometimes it was like a public all, but I had kind of forgotten that. I had kind of forgotten yeah. that he would like pepper it in without anybody without anybody else knowing, like just to the one actor. Yeah. Oh God, that he was He loved fun. it. Yeah. Uh, so Zach Orth, I was going to say like the, the Wet Hot American Summer thing, but he was also, I think, in the original production of Suburbia, that Eric Bogosian oh. play about all the people hanging out. And I don't know why it came up, but I was in a car with, uh, with I believe, Gary Cole and with Zach Orth. And we ta- I, for some reason, mentioned Suburbia. And he was like, why did you say that? And I was like, I don't know. It's just like the first thing play that I could think of that I was in like in and when I was in college or whatever it was just like a, a an easy pull yeah and he was like I was in like the original production of that like with Eric we like back in the day so anyway, yeah I just always thought that was interesting that it's like kind of a seminal at least for I think for people my age it was sort of like you know this is the new kind of theater yeah where we yell and swear yeah. and we drink beer and it's not like all that other you know what I yes. mean and I just yeah. always love that <laughs> so there's a great moment in this scene because I remember Arm talking about wanting Mike to have like a really good friend. Yeah. In Zach Horan. Yes. And you see that so much in this moment when he's like, yeah, I gotta, it's like, hey, we're getting cocktails later. And he's like, no, no I can't. No. Gotta go home. Gotta go home. And, and they then... both just start honestly laughing so... so, it's like so earnest. And then he's like, can you imagine is what he <laughs> says. Yes. And so Zach, good. Zach is like a great example. And I think there are a few other examples in this episode, like the guy that plays uh, the Israeli prime minister. Uh, yeah. Uh, who's like a face I feel like I've seen 100,000 times. Yes. That they just, they come in at land like Jesse, they come uh, like, like Jesse Ennis. Yeah. Comes in and plays everything so dead on. Yeah. And they don't feel like a pressure to be funny in some larger yeah. way Zach Worth, like in that moment it's just such a beautiful funny reaction of like can you imagine and it ends up being such a great bit yes um, uh so then we go on to uh then we go on to a big campaign meeting uh with uh Selena she's very high like she's doing great yeah uh, everything's going well she's on she's in power she's wearing a dress I think that sort of flowery black dress that has the flowers on the side that seems very high fashion, but I might be very wrong about this. Might also seems like DC high fashion. It's yeah. like almost there. It's like 75% of the way there. Yes, totally. It's, I agree. If you just look past it, you'll yeah. be like, oh yeah, wow, they're dressed really well. Yes. Yeah. But then no. But then no. I'd I'd like to just say I noticed how you skipped over the whole Jonah getting a balls tap here wait does that i i <laughs> thought well there i haven't skipped over that yet okay. i do kind of like well i guess like I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that next yeah so uh i think one of the things that happens in that very first scene is that i remember arm talking about when it comes to this pat and oswald run, yeah who i uh, uh so when it comes to this Patton Oswalt run, Arm wanted to make it so that Jonah was like really for the first time, like doing great. There was like this like a cool energy, yes. and like he was almost proud to be in the OEOB. Like yeah, he made like, it like 
Yeah. He, like everybody there is like jocular. Yes. There's like, you know, they make dirty jokes and they're kind of more like him. Yeah. And then the molestation thing really weighs against him because he's finally there. He's like respected and being given actual responsibilities. Yeah. But then there is like the victim of uh, workplace sexual assault yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. He got the ticket to the boys club and then he got a ticket to the boys club that he did not want. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I remember that, uh, and you can see it like you, that, oh, anyway, there's this, there's this, uh, there is a thing from the script that cause Cal, you have access, you still have all these old scripts, which yeah. is amazing. Uh, where in this meeting with, uh, in this meeting, the, uh, this, uh, campaign meeting that they're having there's a bit at the top related to the uh the rules committee where they say okay you're going to be able to bring you know doyle wants input so we're basically going to send somebody with you who's going to have no input and it's a line that does not make it into the show yeah but then actually does explain why jonah is put there yeah which is, I guess that's like one of those things, like that is kind of important information. Right. To like, if you're going to say like, why would they ever put Jonah right. there? Right. That is kind of important information. But again, so much of our show ends up on the cutting room yeah. floor. But do you, I don't know, do you really need it? No, you no, don't. No, kind of not. No, because it's not like anyone's like, oh, well, why is Jonah there? It's yeah. just like, makes sense. Of course Jonah's there. They've tossed him back to the VP side. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I I know what you're saying, but it's hard because there's only so much real There's estate only like 29 in and 20, a half. Yeah, yeah, 28, 28 and minutes. Yeah. yeah. Before the credits roll. Yeah. Yeah. Did, was there ever a time like throughout the editing process, throughout any of it, where you're like, we actually don't know how we're going to get in this very important information into all this, into this show? Or I did definitely it... think they that happened a couple times. Yeah. I couldn't call out the specific episodes, but um, definitely, yeah, as we were shooting, you know, they would do assemblies and it would be like, you know, 70 minutes or something. I was like, how... <laughs> Are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? You know? And that's the thing, too, is like, you know, we all knew as we were shooting it, some of this stuff is going to go. Sometimes we could tell beforehand, right? Like, sometimes yeah. we were like, all right, we all know we're here. Yeah. But it's probably not going to be in the, in the <laughs> episode. Just kind of is what it is, you know? Yeah. Too much too much to do there there was and but i've also been very wrong about stuff that ended like i always i remember when i was like going through the baseball stuff with julia i was like no way this shit's gonna be in the show right i'm not, I'm not funny at all in this yeah you know what i mean and then it ends up in there it's yeah. like oh shit do a good job whether or not you think it's gonna be in there because yes. it might yes so in that uh uh in that we set up in that uh at that campaign meeting, a bunch happens. Yeah. We set up uh, the Picasso's heavy period, yes. the jokes about this painting. Yes. There was also, and as, as if you've heard some of it, I've been trying to track like when people become awful people. Yes. And we've definitely seen a change in Catherine. Yes. Because somebody, because they, somebody says, President Hughes loved it, referring to that painting. And Sarah says, is that why his wife tried to kill herself? Yeah. Which gets a big laugh from Selena. <laughs> and so Selena's already been a bad person. Yeah. But that is a joke that first season Catherine would not that, have made. Nope. Definitely not. Yeah. And that still has like a level of feeling. And so I really liked seeing that because that is a dark joke from yeah. Catherine. Because now her mom's the president. And, and she's now the first daughter because her mom does not have a partner you yeah. know like she is now second you know second to the president yeah so of course she makes a joke like that I <laughs> and mean, wins over her mom I, 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 yeah. <laughs> so messed up <laughs> so she ends up sitting in on this meeting um 
uh, Amy, uh, oh, Amy is stuck in a car with uh, Sam, yep. uh, who has Bluetooth attached to the Bluetooth. And I bring this up because I love uh, Anna's face at the end of this moment. Oh my gosh. When, when he freezes? The voice. No, no, I'm th- about when uh, at her face at the, which, well, when it, yeah, when, yeah, the, yeah. when the FaceTime freezes is also a great face. But when we hear her memos to self, and it's like, it is winnable. Yeah. <laughs> Delete the private polling. And and hair, ask Marianne about electrolysis yeah. as Sam is kind of scrambling to turn it off. I just really enjoy Anna's face yeah. uh, in that moment. Um, uh, uh, there, and so then uh, we have yet another appalling photograph of Catherine. Uh, they ask Catherine to step out of the room because they have some, nat- some yeah. quote-unquote national security problems. And, and in a classic <laughs> yeah. Kent moment, he says, uh, Catherine is a valuable asset, and then as an afterthought, and daughter. Yeah. <laughs> um, we find out that her likability index is not is shallow. Yeah. Very not good. Yeah. Bad. Uh, it's bad. <laughs> bad. It's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> So, oh, I didn't, we didn't get to the tap, tap, to tap, tap. Oh, yeah, look, see, then look we... Look at me, <laughs> a, am I, like, being, am I, like, memory-holding this? Like, you am might. I... yeah. Did Patton Oswalt actually molest me? <laughs> I remember, uh, so, I, uh, oh, God. Don't worry about this. Okay. Don't worry about this. I'm just having a moment. Okay. Because I, I, you know, I, here's here's why I had that pause. Because we got like, this is like a hallmark of the later episodes. There's so much going on. So much going on. And as I was watching it, I was like, oh, I have like a really clean picture of of this, of this plot and how things move from one to the other. But even as I'm looking at my notes, I'm like, holy shit, I for, already forgot to mention five things that are important. Like, it's Hen- it's Henry Harrison Day. Yeah. It's President Henry Harrison Day. Yeah. Who I did not know. Yeah. I learned this from our show. Caught pneumonia because he didn't want to wear a coat during his inaugural address, right? Yeah. And then he was a goner. And then he died. He died of pneumonia like 33 days later. Yeah. So they're celebrating the fact that, like, she is, she will, uh, at this moment, no, like, there's no chance that she will be the shortest serving Yes. Partner. Yes. <laughs> uh, when Jonah is just kind of hanging out and being told that he's going to be sitting in on the family first stuff, uh, uh, Teddy comes in and says, hey, I want to make you f- make me feel good, which immediately is disconcerting yes. for Jonah. Absolutely. Um, uh, and um, for anyone that would hear that, I think. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> hey, you need to make old Teddy feel good. Yeah. <laughs> it's... And how will I be doing that? And how will I can get you some Pringles? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Uh, And then I remember thinking, I remember when Simon described the tapping. This was a Patton creation, this particular tap. Yeah. When Patton described, or sorry, when Simon Blackwell first described the ball thing, he described it as like this jocular, like, uh, you know, the very first one is that. It's like this, yeah, we've got, Balls. We got balls. We yeah. got big old dicks. We got yeah. big old balls and just grabbing. But this one, this was definitely a patent thing, like a tap, 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 yeah. tap, which makes it so much more uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and I just uh, kudos to him for really bringing an ex- extra level of creepiness to it. Totally did. I remember because we had that was the year that we had um, rehearsals in Santa Monica at Shutters. That's right, yeah. Season four rehearsals were mm-hmm. there, and Patton was there. Mm-hmm. I remember you guys working that out, and yeah, exactly what you're describing. Simon, like... Uh, Simon... Ugh. this, But there was like, wait, but what are we going to do for the next one? And I I really... Th- I think Patton was just like, I got an idea. Yeah. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I you got hi- you I get it. I get what's reason. going on here. Yeah. I got something. Yeah. And I, we also had to have... We'll probably end up talking about this a lot in the first episode... Uh, when we when we recap the first episode of this, but I remember like we probably couldn't do it now because like I don't think anybody from the props or costume department had really been in like the just weird jocular ball grabbing. They had probably done you know yeah. like sex scenes before, but they had not. So they were like, "Do you want to wear 
yeah. anything. And I was like, I don't even really know what my options are. I was like, they were like, do you want to wear a cup? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. And I like looked at Patton and I'm like, now I know I should have <laughs> just worn something. Right. I right. should have worn a cup. Right. But I was like, I don't know. And he was like, I don't care. And I was like, yeah, I guess just grab. And he was like, I'll just try to get the area around. And I was like, okay. And we just kind of jumped into it. <laughs> I would have made different choices now, really for Patton's sake more so than my own. Yeah. Yeah. Comfortability for everyone. For everybody. Everybody's Not comfort. Not just the victim. <laughs> yeah. We really need, uh, we probably should have had like a, a position that didn't exist then, which is like the, uh, the intimacy, intimacy coordinator. coordinator. Yes. So See, that's what's, yeah, that's what's interesting is like, you know, when we started this show, that was not a thing. That was not a thing. And I really did wish that I would have had an intimacy coordinator to be like, look, this, the, like uh, holding them up, like, these are your options. This is what they do. This yes. is what they'll feel like. Yes. And then just like, and then be like, okay, yeah, that one. Yes. Do you guys have intimacy coordinators on uh, Succession? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so far and few that we actually the, show anything. Yeah. But yes, when those scenes are happening, absolutely. That's absolutely it, a thing now. But it really is, I think, of all the changes that have happened on set. One of the best. One of the best. Yeah. I worked on Banshee, you know, in oh, between yeah. one of these Veep seasons, and it was sex galore. Yes. And I was the production coordinator, so I was the one talking to the agents. And yeah. Like before intimacy coordinators, it fell on production coordinators. That's who are also in charge and taking care of so many other things. Yeah. It was like, yes, this needs to be its own thing. That needs to sure. be its own thing. Yeah. That doesn't need to be like a harried office person being like, I don't know, they're gonna be butt fucking. Yeah. I don't know. We'll find it out on set. Yeah. Like we don't need to we don't need to find that out on set. Yes. Uh, Banshee was, I was, I actually like a really good show, but yeah. definitely fell into that, like it, cult, you know, culty, sort of pulpy, cult, yes, but fun, but it also was like, here's going to be a, you're a bunch of naked people, yes. like you're a bunch of very attractive naked people, because we know what you're here for, yeah. but it ended up just being a really good show. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Entertaining, for sure. Entertaining, for sure. Um, definitely could have used an intimacy coordinator. 100%. Um, uh, I'm uh, stuttering again. Uh, okay. Pringles. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Uh, so Gary has been uh, has been kind of told, like, go take care of this dinner uh, because I don't want to think about it. Later on, yeah. uh, there's this moment that Selena has where she tells Gary, and I've done this a bunch of times. This is probably something I would not have done when we first met, but we'll do it now. Yeah. When she's like, Gary, I will think about that dinner when I am putting the food in my mouth. Yes. That is, and I, I don't want this to sound the wrong way. Yeah. But that is like a human moment for Selena that I actually do identify with, where sometimes it's like, I know you want me to care about the thing that you're telling me about. Yeah. But I cannot tell you that that is so unimportant to me that I will deal. I like I I have so many things going on. I will deal with that when it is in front of me. Yes. And I will not even think about it until a moment before. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. That's great. There is it. You had a uh, you had a little Midwestern moment ago that I wanted to call out. Do it. I can't remember it. Now, oh, really? Yeah, it had something to do. It had something to do with you being an office assistant, but also an intimacy <laughs> coordinator. Um, and it was just struck me as very Midwesterny, and now I can't remember what it is. So Gary's now kind of put himself in charge of the dinner. Yeah. Um, uh, and he says, if anybody doesn't know the difference between a Valance and a Jabot, I need you to leave. Yeah. He also goes fucking nuts on people. It's like the first time you've ever seen really Gary. Say, taken, yeah. Like taking charge, charge, yeah. And being kind of a dick about stuff. Yeah, kind he, of rude, yeah. He's being rude to people. Yeah. A homeless, did they, the, did these flowers come from a homeless man's grave because they are molesting my eyes? Those are things that Gary would <laughs> never, never say. say. Yes, it's so true. And I just want to say, you know, we meet the lovely Michaela Watkins, mm. who is... So funny. Who is so funny. And I think is only just with us for this one episode. Yeah, this was her role, but... She was 
she was punching below her weight on this. Like she is a performer. If you don't know Michaela yeah. Watson, Watkins, yeah. who could have been on every single episode, should I mean, absolutely. I'm so glad we got her for any amount of time, but we yes. should have had her a million times. Yeah, because she's so funny. She has one of my favorite moments, which almost isn't a moment that belongs on her show, but when later on when the she yeah, the, the, the beep beep beep. it's my favorite thing too. I'm so beep boop. Boop. Hello? Yeah. Can't answer your question, man. So sorry. Got a phone call. Got a phone call. <laughs> it's like so, it's so rude, but also it like, but it almost belongs in a different show, but it, yeah. all, but it belongs in ours just enough Yes. that it fucking hell makes me yeah. laugh so many times. Same. Yep. Um, uh, I want to call out a really funny moment that Reed has in oh, that, yeah. uh, campaign meeting. Yeah. Uh, uh, where, they say like who is going to they they're like who's gonna break the news to yeah. uh, to Catherine, to right? Catherine. Yeah. And there's this long silence and Kent says, I think I have the skills for that. And Reed just throws in like oh there you go. Yeah. Like a great little Reed like I uh, um uh, like he's just cause he's already done the calculations. He yes. already knows that he Yeah He's not going to do it. He's yeah. like, oh, there you go. Yeah. Just, I fucking love it. It's a <laughs> great moment from Reed. Um, uh, Bill Erickson, who has also been set up yeah. in that, he shows up uh, and has this, uh, uh, I just wanted to, which was a big moment in our trailer, I remember. I just want to come, I just stopped by to say a, a friendly hello in an unfriendly way. Yeah. And then manages to say a very friendly hello in an unfriendly way. Yeah. Just being like, hello. Yeah. So good. And I noticed because he came on the show and he talked about um he talked about uh one of the things in his first scene with Julia, he kind of kept finishing her sentences. Yeah. Interrupting he, her. Yeah, yeah. Interrupting her and and finishing her sentences. And he does it right off the bat. He's doing it here again. He interrupts Gary about the Henry Harrison cake. Yeah. And then he interrupts Amy about uh, with every sentence she says in this scene he finishes it yeah he finishes it and then is just like walks off yeah um so he's annoying everyone at this point were you in uh Diedrich's ep- uh, audition I uh, yeah I because I I listened to that episode you did and I heard I do recall that when he was like that was awful because I remember all of us kind of like looking at each other like no well, it really wasn't that awful like and, you know, I think we were all aware, you know, Drew Carey show, of course, like we all knew yeah. him and knew he could be funny, mm-hmm. you know? So I think, yeah, we did. I don't think that we had that impression at all of like, that was not awful, you know? But um, I will say with the auditions too, like part of the reason I was there is like, I was really the tracker of like, oh, we like this person, maybe not for this role, okay, but we're going to feed them back in at some point. So, like, I always had the running list of people we liked. So but just we weren't knew, right for that Weren't thing. right for that role. So as we would go out throughout the season, you know, I would be like, oh, remember this one? And it would be like, yeah, that's that would be great. So that happened all the time, you know? Because we would do these huge casting auditions at the front of the season. Yeah. Only having X amount of scripts. So we would know that we would need people again but just weren't sure for what <laughs> because we didn't have the further episode scripts you know would you call in like if you had the first script or the first two would you call in people who like number one I, i'll ask this is another two-part question yeah more people than you would maybe need but also people who maybe weren't right for that specific part just to see as many people as you could absolutely really yeah because the big thing for Armando um, was that he wasn't always familiar with American actors. Right. So, you know, he really preferred seeing people or seeing their tape. Because that's the other thing is, you know, a lot of times people either don't tape, yeah. won't tape, mm-hmm. or they'll send in their tape, but they like won't come in for the audition. You know, so... And without naming names or parts, I remember yeah. there was a big, kind of a big role at some point that was offered to somebody, 
but who was also like, I need like final script approval. Yeah. And they were like, no. Not having it. Not having it. Yeah. I mean, uh, but also. How could, how how could, could we you? have ever how done could, that? How could, if you were to come on our show and be like, I at some point, two episodes in, you're going to be like, you know what? I don't want final script approval anymore because it's because yeah. I'm staying up until fucking three a.m. Yes. to give approval. Yeah, I was up all night waiting for your new pages. And to... guess what? They never came in. <laughs> and also, just how many times, really? How many times did we rush in two minutes before we're like about to roll with like, hey, sorry, just um, a few little new lines. You got these? You got You're these? fine? Yeah. But yeah, how would that have ever... How would that have ever... And honestly, even if you were... Even if you did want, like, final... And I'm not saying that somebody having final script approval... There are plenty of times where I think that is entirely appropriate. Yeah. And it will absolutely work for somebody. And for, for an actor to be able to have the ability to push back on yeah. something, especially if it makes them uncomfortable or they don't feel it's right... That is absolutely something that they should be able to have. It was just never going to work in the process that we had. Absolutely not. Um, I'm getting the sense. So now that I know that you are also somebody who is in charge of keeping tabs on the actors that you like, but you didn't, <laughs> that Bill Erickson comes in in this scene and says, I have a specific title, but I also have a wide brief. <laughs> Eliminate weakness. And that is you. <laughs> You had a specific title. Yeah. But you had a wide brief. Yes. And so you are the Nazi doctor yes. <laughs> that Bill Erickson <laughs> is being compared to. Um, I just want I uh, just want the Webbies to know that I'm I think that's one of the that little moment just now where I was able to take the real life thing with Callie yeah. and apply it to a scene in the show that we are recapping. Yeah. That's why we got an honorable mention at the Webbies. Tip of the cap. I, thank you. <laughs> you know, sometimes if you don't pat your own back, nobody else is going to pat it for you <laughs> unless you get, unless it is the Webby's giving you an honorable mention, which, of course, non-voting, you can't vote for us. <laughs> so we can't win, Arvin. So what I'm also gathering is that we have neither won nor have we lost. That's correct. We're so, sort of stuck in limbo. We are like the Schrodinger's cat. Of, of Webby Awards. That's right. Yeah. And keep in mind, we're in the same ranks as the queen herself. Oh. The crown, the official podcast. Oh. I don't think the actual queen is on there. Okay, so let's oh, talk okay. about the other honorees. The other... Uh, what are we? Uh, it just says honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mentions. The other honorable mentions. TCM's The Plot Thickens. Uh, Entertainment Weekly's What to Watch, The Office Deep Dive on iHeartRadio, and The Crown, the official podcast. Yeah. So cool. I mean, good company. Yeah, for sure. We have neither won nor lost. No. So thank you to the Webbies for... (laughs) All guts, no glory. Uh, Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So... um, I... there, it's we're gonna go through. Oh, uh, so there's uh, there's a really wonderful Kent and Catherine scene, and I think this also goes to one of the reasons that I like Sarah so much in this show, in that this scene that she has where she's told like that people don't like you, or that it's not that you're unlikable, it's just that there is a perception that you are unlikable. Yes. Which I guess, in a way, is kind of like being a, an honorary mention. Yeah, you are not winning, but there is also a perception that you are not losing. Yes. Something in there. Yeah, God, I'm so we're winning this fucking Webby next year <laughs> off this episode. <laughs> I'm fucking great. They should yeah. consider based off this episode. Yeah. So, the fact that she actually does like there is a thing. In comedy, where they say, like, emotion kills comedy. That if you have an actual, like, anger isn't funny, but frustration is. Because frustration is anger without the emotion or whatever. It's like that thing. Like, yeah. if you if you, if you you actually, ha- and again, to succession, it's something that we've talked about before. If you take the emotion out of succession, you have a show that might feel like Veep. Yeah. But... Uh, but because you actually see the psychological toll that it takes on those characters, right. 
So I feel like this is a really amazing scene from Sarah's from from yeah. Sarah's point of view because she really does bring a lot of human emotion to it. But the scene remains funny. Yeah. All the way up to when Kent doesn't know, turn that frown upside down. And he's like, to the <laughs> inverse of a frown. Yes. She's like, upside down. He's like, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so even once. Yeah, he's like, tears, crying. I cannot compute. Uh, uh, yeah, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Like, even once given the end of the rhyme that he's supposed to know, he's like, yeah, sure, if you want to say it that way. <laughs> yes. uh, there's also a great moment where she says, uh, he's like, okay, I want to talk to you about something. Um, uh, and she says, I didn't take drugs with those guys. I was just on their bus for <laughs> half an hour. And he says, that's good to know, and makes takes a, a little a <laughs> note, takes a little <laughs> note for it. So good. Oh shit! Again, there's so much happening in this episode. I, know. And I thought it was such an easy. So no. I want to go back real quick um, to uh, Zach Orth being fired. Yeah. By her just being like, "Oh, by the way, I called Bill Erickson in to replace you. I'd love to explain my thinking on that, but I just don't have the time." Because what did she say? Because I've got the Israel, Middle East. Yeah, Middle East. That's what it is. It's just all right here. <laughs> And there is then also this moment where nobody knows who Lee is. Yeah. Wh- who is Jesse Ennis, yes. who's amazing, who has this ability. Uh, and I do think that this came from ARMS research or writer's room research of just there being all people. Of yeah. People. That you, yeah. Just, just come in, drop mm, off a paper. Here you go. Leave. Nobody knows who it is. Yeah. They, they must have had information that got them into the West Wing. So yeah. somebody checked. They had to have a badge. Yeah. They had to have a badge. Somebody had to hire them. Yeah. Somebody had to check their credentials. Yeah. But if you are, you can be in a senior position and yeah. somebody can walk up and hand something to you and you're like, great, thank you. And have no fucking clue who that is. Yeah. And so Lee was the embodiment of that character as well as... From what, again, from what I recall. Yeah. They would also hire people just to have bodies to fire if something went yeah. wrong. So somebody like Lee would have been like, whatever, it doesn't matter what they do. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We just need, we need a bunch of extra people in here yeah. to basically be like human shields. Just yeah. like, oh, well, we, we fired high-ranking official XYZ. And it's like some kid who's like, wait, I did what? Yeah. Exactly. And so Lee, the, the the reason that this character is sort of featured in this way is because that's ultimately going to come into play yeah. throughout season four. Yeah. Um, but it is also like uh, Jesse Ennis is far too funny to just be playing the, like those two scenes. But yeah. Even if she wasn't, it's a great bit of like nobody knows who this person. Nobody knows who this person is. Yes. Also, you know. Flashing forward, she does get vengeance and she testimony. Does. She absolutely does. So good. This mouse will roar. Yes. Um, uh, uh, so now we go into the uh, family's first bill through the rules committee. Uh, we're going to see Owen Pierce, the very, oh, very yes. awkward uh, congressman who I believe we saw in season three, episode nine, and the, the debate episode is yes. I think the first time that we meet him. Yeah, he has a very unfriendly hug, uh, or just a very weird, awkward hug with yes. Reed. Uh, and there's a, there's a moment in there that I really like where, and this feels so. I mean, I know it existed then, yeah, but I feel like I see it more and more now, especially with. Tw- especially now with Twitter, like you can kind of have like a daily, a daily thing where like the coupons on his desk of like, you know, my constituents, they're, you know, they, they're cutting coupons and they're worried about fiscal prudence. And it's just like, and, and, but Jonah pointing out is like, oh, most of these are expired. He's like, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. I've been busy. He doesn't actually use them. No. It's just this absolutely empty gesture. Yeah. Yeah. That just sits on his desk to remind him of what he does. And I do think that that is like a very prescient thing for Arm to notice and to throw in. Yeah. Like these performative but ultimately meaningless yeah. shows of solidarity with constituents that they don't give a shit about. Absolutely. But what he does give a shit about 
is going bowling, bowling. with the president, and <laughs> Jonah is like just throwing. He's like, "Oh yeah, you want to go with the president?" Oh my God, and I love like, that how Jonah just keeps going and yeah. going. And Reed, Dan is like, "It's like well, we're gonna have to check with the scheduler." I didn't uh, say she would be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to? Can we? Uh, can 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 your boy uh, do some little humble bragging for a minute? Yeah. You know who's played? You know who? You know who's bowled in the West Wing before? Yeah. Oh. Old two thumbs right here. Yeah, I was pointing for no, those for those of you not <laughs> watching the podcast. I'm pointing one thumb at myself. Yeah. So old two thumbs has actually bowled in that we really didn't bowl like a whole game. It's kind of a shitty bowling alley. Um, Did one really of our just... producers set that up for you, or like no, was I, it when like we went to the White House correspondence dinner? Oh, okay, okay. And so it did it then. And really, we just kind of like threw a couple rounds and then like took pictures and then we were like, this fucking sucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's still just a bowling alley. It's still just a bowling alley, and it doesn't have, like, the electrical thing, yeah. and nobody knows how to, like, how to keep score without that. Oh, right. Yeah, do you know how to keep score in bowling? No, no. Arvin, do not. you? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> It'd be funny if Arvin was, like, Yes, I really do. Good. Yeah. Secretly. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. It's actually pretty easy. Oh, you... you know who does? Kevin Dunn. Yeah. Kevin he, Dunn. He was um, on a bowling team. And you want to know how I know this? How? Because I'm from small town Illinois. Mm-hmm. And I always say Chicago because uh, who, right. who really says you're small town, right? But also fucking Chicago does that. They want to say that they're from Chicago even though they're, even though they're from Naperville. It's true. Where are you from again? Streeter, Illinois. Streeter, oh, oh, look at you. But so I did my, my Chicago spiel to Kevin. And he was like, yeah, but like, no bullshit. Where are you from? Like, I'm from Illinois. Where are you from? And I was like. It's called Streeter. And he was like, oh, I've bowled there. I was like, <laughs> excuse me, Kevin? He was like, yeah. Yeah, I was on the bowling team. Yeah, I went there and bowled. So I know exactly where Streeter was. I was like, wow. Just Kevin Dunn. And then he's probably, you know what else is in Streeter? He'll, like, he'll be like, there's, uh, you know, there's a place <laughs> that's got a good deal on drywall. Because I was kind of, I was redoing, <laughs> I was kind of building like a little add-on, like a little add-on shed. <laughs> I had all the studs up, but all this drywall was too expensive. And he'll like run you through like this whole home reno project yes. that he's doing. It's like, yeah, I got to grade out the concrete. Yes. Uh, it took me all fucking day. You know yes. what? I, <laughs> he's such a good Chicago guy. I God, it. I love him. Yeah. Um, uh, Jonah at some point actually says something really smart during that. I think he just is like he kind of sums it up. He's like, okay, so you're worried. You uh, you agree with the spending in yeah. principle, but um, and Reed and even Reed is like, holy shit. Yeah, he was like, wow, wow. Yeah, you impressed good, him. Good little moment. It's a yeah. good reminder that Jonah was at some at some moments good at his job. Yeah, and I think also feeling the confidence of the new position. Yeah. sands the molestation. Right. Well, I mean, I think he was already just repressing it almost immediately, right? Yes. Like, yes. this is, is not happening. That didn't happen. There is something that happens later on in this episode, which then became like a long-running joke between Addison and I. Oh, okay. But then also was a big part of, of this entire, uh, uh, of this entire storyline in that whenever Teddy's name was mentioned to Jonah without Teddy around, he would say, hmm? <laughs> he would, he would, uh, was like his brain was doing the thing that I yeah. was doing earlier of like, just like, I'm not, I'm not really admitting that this is happening or that this person exists. So yeah. if you go back through and look, every yeah. time he's mentioned, it happens in that big scene, like when Kevin's yeah. walking around without his shirt on because like, this is a diehard. Yeah. <laughs> He somebody mentions Teddy and Jonah's like, hmm? yeah, and it then just became a long running joke between Addison and I. But if you look, that was something that I built in. Yeah, to every single time he's mentioned. Yeah, every hmm? yeah, but it's so good because it's like you can t- you can just tell just by that subtle response, like something is underneath that. Something is something is underneath that. He's like, what is this person going to say about Teddy? Exactly. Do they know? Yeah. Am I going to be judged for this? Like, uh, Yes. Yeah. That's what I was trying. Yeah, no, it totally to comes across because you didn't even have to point it out to me. I remember that. I remember, uh, yeah. Big ups. Yeah. You know what? I, if there was a Webby Award for <laughs> television, it feels like maybe the show would have won 
one, or at least been an honorable mention. Um, if there was an award for how many times we mention it in one episode, I think we would have definitely, we definitely killed it. Have. We, we I feel it. like at kind of trashing the Webbies throughout an entire episode is a good way to never get nominated for the <laughs> Webbies. Who's actually on the nominating committee? Yeah. Um, I go ahead and Google that. And just this. interrupt me to tell me in a minute. Well, in uh, our category, here, here we go. There is... Uh, oh, oh, this is who was actually nominated? <laughs> Motherfucker, HBO Succession podcast. Oh, <laughs> Office Ladies, Dexter, the New Blood wrap up. Billy was a black woman. I don't know that show. Oh, it's an Audible original. Oh, that's cool. Movies that changed my life. What the fuck? <laughs> HBO Succession podcast. Bunch of fucking Johnny Come Latelys. Oh, he's coming out on top. You know? Oh God. <laughs> How many? How many? How many? You guys went in a row? <laughs> Tell me that, huh? Uh, We're two for two right oh, now. Motherfuck. Well, uh, we'll see what the fall for, brings. We'll so the we'll fall go brings. three for three. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> we were zero for three in the. Zero for three. Zero for this three. This was the season. This is the season that did it. This is the season that did it. Chef's oh kiss. yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's no honorable mention from the. I'm, I'm furious right now. <laughs> uh. Zach Worth, Zach Worth has a great moment here where Mike says, will you announce your own firing? Yeah. And he gives like such a thoughtful nod. Yeah. Gives him a little pat on the shoulder and says, no. no. <laughs> nope. Not do it. And the letdown in Mike's face too. Yes. So good. Of like, <laughs> great. Yeah. He's like, oh, fuck. Like he's losing a friend, but also in that moment, like the friend's like, we aren't friendly enough. Yes. That I'm gonna fuck. That I'm gonna go sit on that sword for you. Yes. Um, there's a just a great. Uh, oh, there there's this thing about the the painting being moved about yeah. like you know going out for cleaning. It's like a it's a pre cleaning like a juice cleanse. It was but it was only painted four months ago. But I do want to bring this up. The dye is running down his his face. Yeah. The because he's sweating because he's nervous. Yeah. And somebody on Reddit, I believe, oh, uh, we now have a, a subreddit, the oh. second in command. Really? Yeah, uh, 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 r-second uh, second in command on Reddit, if you want to talk about the episodes, if you want to nominate us for a Webby Award, or vote for the Succession podcast, you can do that there. Wow. Um, yeah, so you can go through, you can make comments, not a lot of members right now, but you know, yeah. you know we're driving people there. Yeah. Um, five are online right now. Wow. Five are online. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Succession has seen numbers like that. So, <laughs> so uh, somebody on Reddit, I think in the Veep subreddit, brought this up. The, that, you would think, like, maybe the mustache dye being that bright and running down his face. Like, is that a little broad for the show? But then you have Rudy fucking Giuliani. Yeah. Sweating all the hair dye down the side of his face. And it's like, oh. No. Nothing we have done was stupid enough to not be real. Correct. Yeah. It's really, really disheartening. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I recall discussions, too, of the same thing when we were doing it. Of just like, is, you know. and It pays off in a really funny moment of Diedrich like seeing that picture of Mike photoshopped without a mustache that Mike just sees, but Diedrich doesn't say anything about. <laughs> but no, but I, uh, what did, how often did you have that conversation? Yeah, I was like, is this stuff too is broad? Is this too broad? Quite often, I think. Yeah. 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 And if it was, we definitely had the conversation of like, how can we make it more veep, less broad, you know? Would, would, the, would the initial idea be to film it and see if it worked later, try to adjust it, like try to dial it down? Definitely or, sometimes, or yeah. would you just say like, it's not going to work, we just cut it? I think, no, definitely sometimes it would be like, well, we'll just see on the day. Mm -hmm. Especially with this mustache, I remember this, because it was just like, what is it going to look like? Like, yeah. that was a concern. Yeah, is it going to be too much? Is it going to play right? But ultimately, obviously it did. Um, but no, you're right. Sometimes it would be like, all right, we we know that this one's too broad and we can definitely say goodbye to it, you yeah, know? Yeah. Just like Mike and his monkey, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, there is a great bit here uh, of the U.S. Poultry, the, a great line from Sufi of the U.S. Poultry Commission is worried that there are no current photos of you eating eggs. Yes. Oh, my gosh. She Wait, has a couple good lines, I think, in this episode. But Yeah. This is, a, that is like an absolutely ridiculous concept, and it's a ridiculous line delivered dead straight and immensely funny in a so way that funny. only Sufi can. Yes. 100%. Yes. Um, there's this whole, then there's this whole other scene with Reed and, uh, with Reed and I, uh, sort of like the frustrated two man, like the back and forth two man show of Reed and, uh, or of Dan and Jonah <laughs> getting upset with one another. <laughs> um, uh, another person on the rules committee, there's this whole thing about like Martin Scorsese's yes. new movie. Uh, and he's like, I don't know, he's really prolific. Yeah, he's got to have something dropping soon. Got to right? have something <laughs> dropping soon. I I do know I want to give a shout out to Annie, my wife Annie, yeah. um, who also was working in the production office of Veep, which is where she and I met. Yeah. Um, and we now have two, that's not true, <laughs> we met before that. Um, uh, that she was the one that introduced me to the movie King of Comedy. I had not seen it before we met. I'd seen a lot of Martin Scorsese yeah. movies, obviously. Um, but she was like, no, King of Comedy is really good. And it is really good. And that was not in the script. It was just like, I'm just, I just want to do, yeah, I just want to do more Marty bits. Here. Yeah. I just, I wanted to bring up a oh, King of Comedy underrated. Yeah. And it also just seemed fucking stupid to bring up like that. He <laughs> like, I don't know if this is too Hollywood or whatever. Like maybe somebody that doesn't follow film closely, but like the idea of, he does like a bad Italian like Matty accent, yes. and then he's like, "Ooh, King Comedy, underrated." It's yeah. like so stupid to bring up in that <laughs> moment, but I am happy it made it in. Yeah, that. and I wanted Annie to feel like she was a part of it too. That absolutely, you know, there was an influence. Yeah. Um. I uh, there's a wonderful line, a couple wonderful things. Uh, you know, they have to practice. Catherine's smile. Uh, Julia asks to give yeah. her more hair because her volume. volume because her skull is very low. Yeah. It's indented. Uh, poor Catherine. Uh, poor Catherine. Also a running theme in the whole entire series. <laughs> poor Catherine. Oh, poor Catherine. <laughs> uh, Reed asks uh, Amy how... Sam Richardson is working out and she says he's <laughs> eager and intelligent and every night I dream of drowning him. Yes. <laughs> so great. I, mean, I don't know why. I mean, this is just, I mean, maybe it's my mom watches every single episode of the show. <laughs> so maybe it is because of the way they've raised me, but it's always those lines that make me the happiest. Yeah. Where it's just somebody being like, there was a thing earlier this week that I have not stopped laughing about. Somebody tweeted this, and again, I'm really bad at remembering who it is that does this. Yeah. Where they were like, they were at a store, and they were like, hey, can I try one of these grapes before I, can I like eat one of these grapes before I buy them? And the guy said, you could set fire to this building with me in it. <laughs> or I wouldn't care if you set fire to this building with me in it. <laughs> And that makes me laugh. Yeah. And it really is a high compliment and a good, a, a great, uh, a, a great, uh, like, sort of summation of Sam's character. Intelligent, capable. Right. But holy fucking shit. I, I, you make, you drive me fucking crazy. Yes. Everything you're doing to make me more comfortable makes me want to kill myself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is how... So that is how uh, Richard and Jonah end up working together, which ends up... So this is the moment, this yeah. long-running friendship yes, and, and working relationship. Yeah. It starts right there. Yeah. The assistant's assistant. Yes, the assistant's assistant. The assistant's assistant. Yeah. Immediately, he thinks Jonah is the coolest fucking guy. Oh, yeah, idolized. Idolizes him. Instant idolization. Yeah. I... Uh, which I think goes back to like sort of like, and we talked about it, I, I think one of the reasons this worked so well is that they do kind of have like a Bert and Ernie vibe. Yeah. And they are not, we are natural foils, Sam and I sort of, or at least, or Sam and I, but also character wise, we are natural foils in our heights in, uh, and also in our attitudes and that Jonah is all bluster and anger and frustration and Sam is positive and, 
happy and, and earnest. Like they really are like, but they put up with each other's things yes. so well. They just love being around the other. And I think that is why that relationship works so well. Yeah. Um, there is the actual uh, dinner. Uh, Gary, Gary uh, has spent uh, an amount of money that uh, would be like Elton John on a day he feels fat. <laughs> Julia milking comedy, like like there's that air supply song, like making love out of nothing at all. Yeah. She makes comedy out of nothing at all when she says, Mr. Ben Ahim and Mrs. <laughs> ben Ahim. She manages to make that one of the funniest lines in the episode. And I don't, it's just because of the cadence of the pronunciation. Yeah. She's a fucking genius. She's so good. Um, the funniest. In my opinion. Then we get into... Uh, then we get into the sort of Gary Antoinette big clo- like office fight scene. Yeah. Where they are just being like... So... Bitter. Yeah. And cruel to one another. Yes. And everything that they've... All of their resentments mm-hmm. are coming out in this. What did she say? It Really, I wrote it down that it was close to cruelty. You are unimportant. You have suckered on to me like a car window Garfield. Yes. <laughs> you are a middle-aged man who sanitizes my tweezers. Yes. And she's, and he brings back great points. Yeah. Like, When's Catherine's birthday? And she gets it wrong. Yeah. Uh, who, who's a, Whose daughter's in rehab? Which senator's daughter is in rehab? Doesn't know. Doesn't know. And then is the is the third thing like would any uh, would or any, no was there, there one was, more there was beat one more. and then the blow up one yeah and then the blow up one so you have oh because he says the I'm your calendar I'm your Google I'm your Wilson the I'm volleyball. your Wilson the volleyball and she says you are not right I think she yeah. says you are not and like, then that's when he's like can you think of any like you're nothing without she says something like you're nothing without me and he's like can you think of anyone who would do what I did for you and she and so this is then the introduction of Labor Day Labor Day. So Which, good. I don't know if this ever comes up when people find out that you worked on it, but that is a very common question of people being like, what happened on Labor Day? Yeah. Hey, do you know? Do you know? Labor Day is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> well, I would say... That's for everyone. That's for everyone. Labor Day <laughs> is for whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Because I have ideas of what it might yeah. be. Yeah. But I know that... G- I do believe that Julia and Tony discussed, and they know what it is they may have decided on something for sure the, but but I, I, I but i'm saying in your i will say in my side of things there were definitely things tossed out mm-hmm. left and right i even asked sean before since i had watched the episode i was like what do you what is your spin on labor day and he had a whole theory that i don't remember so i was like oh wow this is very interesting that even us who worked on the show yes. don't really have an answer but i remember like we're never gonna know I remember, like, that was the ultimate decision yeah. of, like, no one will ever know what happened on Labor Day. And to their, and to uh, to Tony and Julia's credit, they have never mentioned it. They have never talked about what it actually is. Yeah. And they have never, and I've never asked. Yeah. Um, and whenever it's come up, they I don't think they've ever, I think it's nice. I think it's fun that they know. And, and not only they as characters, but they as actors uh, they will never tell anybody. Yeah. And then, and then ultimately like this gets in, which uh, another, it's another great move by Dave Mandel by making it like after you watch the scene, it's on Labor Day, which points to the date. And then later Dave makes the boat called Labor, Labor Day, Day. Yes. Which then just gab- adds more mystery to it. And yeah. fucking hell, I love that. <laughs> so good. So they say something like in a relationship, it's good to clear the air. Which it always is. Oh my, that is a light sponge. And then we have an awkward credit rollout of Catherine trying to be nicer. Yes. So, a few things I want to say, actually. Oh, yes. I so, believe we have a joke that needs yes, to be talked about. But, but yes. I want to say mm-hmm. the Selena Gary blow up, I just remember we rehearsed that what felt like a hundred times. Really? Yeah. That was definitely worked out more than once. Yeah. And probably a hundred different versions of the scene. Really? There were just things that weren't right exactly. But I remember when we did do like the on-camera rehearsal, like they both, Julia and Tony were like, 
that feels good. Like, yeah. this is the version yeah. we're doing it. Because that is a scene, ultimately, that when you see when you see just what it is, like, oh, well, yeah, that works. It, you know, it yeah. must have always worked. Right. But that can go wrong if it's too jokey, if it's too emotional, if it's too... Like, it does seem to strike the right balance of... There are funny things in it. Yeah. But they are dead serious. And like they, those two characters actually do need to be saying all of this yeah. to one another. Yeah, right. Yeah. And those were, I mean, no, I think it's is that it, like it is important for, for those two characters to work that out, but also for Julia and Tony to work that out just because like, I feel like those were always the scenes that like, you know, like I, I feel like Tony, Tony won Best Supporting Actor at the... Not at the Webbies. Not I mean, at the Webbies. honestly, who could ever shoot that high? <laughs> but at the Emmys, he won... How many times did you win? Three? Two? Three? I think two for sure. Two for sure? But maybe three. Uh, it's Prime Times Comedy Support... Wait, those are nominations. Let's look at nominations and wins. <laughs> A category we will not be in when it comes to the Webbies. There he is. You, um, nominee. Uh, winner. Oh, there okay. he is. Winner 2015. Twice. 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 Yeah. He won twice. What, for the first season? That's season two, right? Well, we were nominated. Was he nominated every... He was nominated every year. Was he nominated every oh, year? except for Wait, no, six. Was he nominated our final year? I think he might have... Yeah, hold on. Uh, well, let's just say, well, right. let's just say this. There I'll say go, with, right? without without the information. Yeah. I'll say that I think that it was always these scenes. It was like the scene where his nose bleeds oh, in yeah. episode three. And it's like this scene, like that's what like kind of like both not only nominates, but also gets Tony to win Emmys. Like those scenes of like he just gets trampled on and all these other scenes but when he has those blow ups like these incredibly complex moments with yeah. her that are also incredibly funny and he's able to both of them are able to balance all of that together in this sort of cathartic thing like yeah of course he gets nominated and, yeah. and then wins yeah he's fucking awesome he's really good at it so good yeah what was your so yes and then in the credits oh do you have a credit roll you have a credit roll I have some credit roll things you gotta to pat say. ourselves on the back because you, you know. know what the industry isn't gonna do it for you all the time yeah um, Arvin if you could give me a standing ovation after I say yeah. this I'd really appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> absolutely um, oh you tasted the <laughs> oh, you got a taste of the fame hose and here you are um, the painting, she's walking through the Native Americans uh -huh. in the Oval Office. Yeah. And, um, she points out the painting and says, it's so pretty. That was my pitch. That was me. Uh -huh. I was like, she should say it's pretty because his follow-up line is, I believe it's called Massacre. So was the, were both of those yours or was it was like already in there that he's calling this painting Massacre. Okay. But it was, what are all... That Julia, that Selena can say, and like, how would she describe this painting? And truly, when I saw the painting, I was like, if I'm just going off the painting, it it's, looks it's, it's pretty. pretty. It's a great bit. But I add, you know, and the so pretty, like that's so pretty, don't you think? Because you know, the fun part about writing jokes for this show and with all of you is like knowing your voices so well too. Is like when you're writing, like I could hear her saying that. Yeah. And I remember like handing over the pages, and they like. I, I think it was Chris Addison. He was on set that day. I think so. And he laughed at like, so pretty. Like, which is so simple. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So simple. But he was like, that's the one. And you, there it was. I know? remember, I don't remember how, but I remember at some point, somebody like, I don't know, maybe they like posted pages of it on Twitter or something like that. But like people would talk about like writing Veep spec scripts and stuff like that oh yeah and it was all, or like maybe people were just telling me stories about how they read the spec scripts yeah Thank you. oh no that's what it must have been it must have been like people submitting to be in the writer's room yeah and a lot of times they ended up being like what they forget like man like i think mandel would talk about this like what sometimes people forget is it's not how wordy and sweary you can be it's like the most direct line of the best joke yeah and that is it's like very honest that picture is painting that or that picture is very pretty, and 
then there's like the sort of high and low, the high of that that's very pretty, yeah. and then the low of I believe it's called massacre. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yes. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. I have uh, Arvin standing up in the back. I have one more. Too. Oh, what do you got? Because you were like, uh, and you know, it's Catherine and something over the credits. That was actually me as well. Was it? The Catherine scene over the credits. Because what happened is that the writers had written, it was basically an eighth of a page. It was an absolutely nothing scene. Yeah. And I think it was just like her kind of like being announced in front of these kids. Like, it, I'm telling you, it, it was like, okay, guys, like, are we really going to shoot that? It was one of those, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. are we really going to shoot that? Plus, you know, me being a producer, I knew it was a location move. So it was like, are we really, really, are we really going to really lo location move, move to just have this? her be like? Yeah. So I remember I had I I specifically called the meeting with them, the writers. I was like, guys, if we want to keep this, which I think we should, given Catherine's storyline, first daughter, she's unlikable. We need her to be likable. Yeah. Because one of my things with all t TV shows is like when you bring something up and there's no real payoff or mm -hmm. something with it, it drives me nuts. So I was like, no, we should do something. And they were like, okay, but like, what? What do we do? And I had reached out to our consultant, um, Anita McBride, because that's another one of my roles was talking to the consultants a lot, making sure they got the scripts. They came back with notes Arm would review notes and then decide what we would actually implement yeah. and what we would not. So I had a good relationship with them, especially by season four, because, you know, we were a well-oiled machine at this point behind the scenes. Oh, um, yeah, really super well-oiled. <laughs> no notes. No notes on our organization. In terms of our the shooting process. days were just smooth as silk, <laughs> scripts in on time, no <laughs> notes. In terms of... Getting the show made, we were a well-oiled machine, right? Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that absolutely <laughs> works. No <laughs> notes on that part of it either. <laughs> so um, I had reached out to Anita and I said, hey, has there ever been a time, like, are the first ladies involved with Girl Scouts? And she was like, yeah, First Lady Lou Hoover, like, may have been the first president of Girl, Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but this is this is what I recall. And um, she's like, so yeah, very, very much so has been a tradition for first ladies to be involved with the Girl Scouts. So again, Selena doesn't have a partner, but she has a first daughter. Yeah, this seemed like a really good bit. So I was like, I was like, there's this whole Girl Scout thing with first ladies. She can be giving away medals and honors. So that was my pitch. They went and wrote it. It was now like a page long. Yeah. And I remember them all like kind of coming to me and like, okay, here it is. Like, but like Callie, like read this. And I, and I did. And they were like, is that good? Like they were looking at me to be like, like either I was going to say yes or no to this. Like that was one of the few <laughs> times like, that I had. It. Yeah. I I'm got here the to, power. Uh, I'm here to eliminate weakness. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I remember because it was Kevin and Andy. Uh, yeah, Kevin yeah. was like, is, is this what you were looking for? And I was like, yes, this is great. And we put it in the script. And I remember, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Arvin. Getting another standing ovation. Um, yes. I remember the next morning, Arm had just flown into town mm -hmm. um, to come on set. And, you know, I always drove him to set. And it was me, him, and Tony Roach in the car. And Arm was like, I really love Catherine and the Girl Scouts. And I'm like driving, keeping my cool. So like, I'm glad you like it, Arm. But Tony from the back seat was like, that was Callie Hershaway, actually. That was her. And awesome. he was like, way to go. And I was like, thank you. So, so it so, it's, it feels so nice to get a pat on the back from people you respect. Oh my God. And you're still working with Tony Roach on Succession. Yes, I am. Who's the best. The best. Yeah. The best. The, just the best. I fucking just, love him. Yeah. He, uh, he had a big birthday on Succession, and I made the I had the art department turn him into Pickle Tony from Rick and Morty. Oh, Pickle is he a Rick, Rick and Morty guy? Yeah, likes Rick and Morty. Oh, okay. So I made them make him Pickle Tony. That's nice. Now I just pull it up on my computer whenever I need a good laugh. Did did he like it? Did he enjoy loved it? it? Oh, okay. Yeah, he did loved he like it. it in that Tony way? He was like, oh, bro, yeah. <laughs> 
No. Oh, that's nice. I love it. <laughs> you know, he loved it. Oh, he, he actually loved it. Loved he it. actually had like a big response. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, we do a thing where we do walkbacks. Uh, oh, wait, we have uh, fam questions. Yeah, coming. we have um, three questions. We have three from, questions from really big fans. Yeah, really big fans of you, Kelly. Okay. Um, give me one second, guys. One second. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Cool. Tim, Kelly, it's... Uh, my name is Matt Walsh. I live in Toluca Lake, California. <laughs> and a uh, big fan of the show. Um, my question is for Callie. Uh, I heard that in the second season of Veep, President Hughes almost materialized and that casting uh, searches had been made for various well-known actors to play President Hughes and actual scenes were generated, dialogue scenes between Selena and Hughes. Uh, I didn't... Can you confirm or deny this? And uh, sorry about the noise. <laughs> I'm in the... Uh, airplane bathroom flying to Chicago <laughs> doing press for just a movie I produced wrote starred in called Unplugging no big deal coming out April 22nd what a pro yeah he gets a plug in for his own project while asking a fan question what a pro yeah I okay so I will say this I feel like I've talked about this before I always thought there was a joke with Arm about thinking like if we saw the president it would be Jeff Goldblum but was there a, w w tell me tell me yeah. the answer to that question yeah I'm yeah that that definitely was a consideration at one point there definitely was a scene written between between Selena and President Hughes um, I remember getting a list from Allison Jones, of course, with high caliber actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, we've talked about this guy so much. Like, yeah. how can you not go there, right? How can you not cast big with that role? But in the end, um, I, I think that the the answer was the show's called Veep. Why? Yeah. Why do we need to see the president? We don't need to see the president. If we did see him, does it blow the whole show up? Yeah. Um, and then with whoever you acted, like, are you really just going to have them come do this one scene? Right. So it just, it didn't make any sense, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that happened. So there was an actual scene written with Hughes. Yeah. Would it have been in that final episode in episode 10? Yeah. That's what I can't remember is it was definitely one of the final episodes, but was it, was it season two running when he's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he comes in for a meeting, that right? Been, uh, that would have been... Yes, he comes in for that meeting where there's the wall of Secret Service guys. But like, would it have been in that one or... Or was it, yeah, yeah. season three that he's going to come and say, I'm stepping down yeah. or whatever. I can't remember which season, but it definitely... Yeah. Was, was Goldblum on the list? I think he was. Oh, cool. But uh, there were so many good actors, you know, yeah. so many. Yeah. Did you have one on the list that you really liked the idea of that you can remember? I can't. I feel like, you know, who somebody who was always on the list that I was always like, oh, that'd be fun. Kevin Klein. Yes. Was just like yeah. always. He was always. <laughs> yeah, I remember like even like even during the Mandel years where I was like, where could Kevin Klein be? In yeah. Like every year was like he was always on there up there and it's like. Are we ever going to get him on? I'm God, not sure. God, fucking awesome. Yeah, it would have been cool. All right, let's get this second fan question. Here's another big fan. Uh, hey, second in command. This is Matt Walsh from Toluca Lake. <laughs> big fan. Um, like apologies if uh, Callie, I'm not there. Tim, that's what an apology sounds like. My question <laughs> is... Um, you motherfucker. <laughs> first of all, my mom is here. Say hello, Mom. Hello. I'm at my mom's uh, house. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> Who's your favorite character on Veep? Mine? Yeah. You. What's his character's name? Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. M. Mike. It starts with an M. Yeah. Last name. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Mike oh, McClintock. Oh, good, yeah. Anyways, okay. I wanted to have my p mom on the podcast. I'd like to know about the uh, consultants. <laughs> In the early stages, you guys were having them look at every, or uh, the production was having them look at every script and they would give notes and then at some point that changed how did the process change and why um that's for Callie yeah so the consultants always weighed in always always and sometimes 
they may have even gotten some scenes before you guys did, just in terms oh, for of sure. like, I'm for, is uh, this yeah, accurate? Sure, yeah. Are we even heading in the right direction here? Um, I remember early on, though, at one point, we gave the writers of the episode the notes, and they had incorporated all of them. And um, our Amanda was like, no, we don't want to do that. He was like, we, we've got to change the system. You just get, you get all the notes, compile them, and then I'll go through action the ones that I want, and then he will tell the writers okay. which one to implement. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. And then they, you know, consultants, that's their job to point out when things are inaccurate. But yeah. sometimes, you know, if you don't change a note, they'll just continually bring it up and just be like, yeah, I've said this, um, you know, 100 drafts ago, but still, it's still in there and it's not right. You know, <laughs> like they were always very good at doing their job, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. letting us know. But sometimes it would be like logistical things of like them being insiders and knowing where this office was and how it would get. Right. And they would, you know, that would never, that would never work. But movie yeah, magic, it, it takes, you got to take It actually your takes nine minutes to walk from yeah. that office to that office. So really like it doesn't really try, and you're like, stop. Yes. Stop. Yeah. Thank you for your insight. Yes, and exactly. And your expertise. Yeah, exactly. I think we have, that's a, that's a good answer. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, Tim and Matt. It's Matt Walsh. Uh, my audio log, I'm Sorry. here in Hinsdale at the Corner Bakery with my mom, Audrey Illinois. Walsh. <laughs> Illinois. Hinsdale, Illinois. Hinsdale, right. Illinois. The great state. Oh, Hinsdale. Great state, Link, <laughs> land of Lincoln. Right. And uh, my question is for uh, Callie, as you would go out every season for rehearsals um, and also casting sessions, A, was there ever a time where you had to fly back and didn't know they were canceled and B um, <laughs> when you were casting people in the rooms when Arm and uh, Julia and everyone were finding roles for like uh, Catherine or uh, Jesse Ennis was there ever concern for like oh a legacy is that weird that we're casting someone whose parents were already in entertainment and then Ooh. my mom had a comment about uh, Mike's dog his bullshit Sue. Did you like that character? I did indeed, the, yeah. The blanket of it all? What did you like about it? What do you mean by blanket? The you said overall? it was like Mike's blanket, his security blanket? Oh, yeah, it definitely was. Right. Yeah. But it couldn't have gone on for five seasons. It, you probably would have been bored by the fifth season of The Dog and, yeah. and Mike, yes. Did we ever name it? No, it was never named. Uh, that I don't remember, no. Would you like to name the dog? Do you have a good name for Boo-hoo. the dog? Boohoo. <laughs> my mom's name for Mike's dog is Boohoo. May we... Well, oh, we did God. name the dog Simon. He said his name That's is Simon. Right. His name is Simon. Obviously, a nod to Simon Blackwell. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to call out Matt's mom, just being the best. She, the best. She's the best. Like uh, nothing. I know that we were like worked really hard to create four and a half to five hours of premium cable every year, but there is nothing funnier than our moms. Yeah. <laughs> my mom's incredibly funny. Matt Walsh's mom is incredibly fucking funny. That was fantastic. She just had her l- lovely Midwestern dry, like, uh, Yeah, right. Chicago, Hinsdale. Yeah. Hinsdale, Illinois. Um, home of um, my friend uh, Jeffrey Borwinkle. He's another actor. Uh, I think his stage name is Jeffrey Thomas. Uh, son of uh, Thomas Borwinkle, who holds the uh, uh, single game rebounds record for the Chicago Bills. Chicago Bulls, 33 rebounds in one game. Ooh, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Thomas, Jeffrey Borwinkle is also very tall. He's like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, he's tall. Yeah. To answer Matt's yes. question, yes, there was a time that I was mid-flight to Los Angeles, and I got an email that um, rehearsals had been canceled. And How long did you stay? <laughs> um, here's the thing about... I'll back up and say, I got an email that morning from Armando Yeah. of just, I couldn't tell you exactly what it said, but it didn't sound like, like. <laughs> it didn't sound like maybe I should get on my plane that day. And I think I even replied saying, should I get on my plane? But I didn't get an answer. And I was like, hey, I have to proceed business as normal. I don't know anything. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could all come together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get on my plane, paid for internet, I remember, to make sure that I would know <laughs> if they were canceled while I was flying. 
yes, that's what happened. I literally was then emailing HBO Travel to be like, can I please get a flight back to the East Coast? Because Hurricane Sandy was coming. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And I knew I had to still work. And especially if we weren't having rehearsals here, like yeah. I, then that means I had to be back in Baltimore working. So I was like, I need to just get back, unfortunately. Like, sure, I could have stayed out here, but doing nothing when like I would have been more useful back, right? So I literally walked across LAX, like got off my plane, walked across LAX to go right back into departures. An- another plane. Yeah, and flew back to the East Coast. So I was on the, you know, I had like 12-hour flight across the United States one day. Thank God. you, Veep. God bless you. <laughs> Some sweet freak flyer miles, too. Yeah, that's, that's true. Dope. Yeah. Did you have any worries about casting legacy performers? Oh, yeah. I mean, that definitely was um, a conversation I remember at the time because it also wasn't just Sarah Sutherland. There were definitely other For legacy sure. yeah. Yeah. kids coming in. Um, and, yeah, that was definitely, like, I don't know. Do you do it? Do you not do it? How do people feel about it? But, you know. There was no, uh, there was no other person who could have I mean, been really, Catherine. Yeah, you know, no, no other person that could have played Catherine, and Jesse Ann is coming in, just absolutely knocks it out of the park. Yeah, and Lee as well. Like it's just sort of undeniable in yeah. those senses. Um, when you know, you know. When you know, you know. Yeah. Just like the Webbies. Yeah. They knew when they knew. Uh, <laughs> do you have any walkbacks or double downs? Anything that you feel like you need to maybe walk back, um, double down on. I don't think so. I think you killed it. Thank I don't you. have anything to walk back either. Really? Maybe the maybe the maybe I'll walk back a little bit of the fact that I've basically been trashing the web <laughs> the entire time. Um, uh, do you have anything to plug? If you say success, succession, I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> succession is available God to stream it. on HBO Max all three I'm seasons. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Then uh, congrats on the Webby nomination, Kelly. And we just won a Webby. No, you're not. Oh, we did win. Don't get that we just were all nominated. Cars. All right, can we go back Actually to the Actually uh, nominated uh, thank for you. a Webby Award. We <laughs> apparently want to thank Callie Hershaway for joining us on the pod today. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second in Command of Eve Rewatch. As always, we love hearing your questions. Just like that fan from Toluca Lake, California, you can submit your questions to castmedia.com. Slash second in command. Tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Listen to listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. Watch our episodes on Spotify as well as YouTube to get in on the action. And as always, follow, rate, review, and leave five stars. We'll see you next week. Woo!